Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. Got home from work a little while ago. I'm really tired, but I got a text message from my sister saying, did you hear that Tina Turner died? And um, I have not seen any news reports or any other YouTube channels because I just want to speak from my heart because it's a sad day. And Tina Turner was the real deal, man. She was a rocker. And it's a sad day. So I'm going to talk about my experience musically and seeing her live and a brief history of Tina Turner. And today, my Tennessee hat to T is for Tina Turner, a true legend. Um, of course, she's uh, been kind of um, out of the public eye for a while. She left the United States. And uh, my understanding, although she kept a very low profile, understandably, but she had been in ill health for a while. I think she may have had a stroke and some serious illness for quite a while. And I, my understanding is she was living the rest of her life in dignity as a regular human being outside the country with a wonderful husband that she loved. And hopefully she died with the dignity and uh, everything that she deserved. Because uh, obviously if you saw the movie and you know her story, she's been through a hell of a lot. Um, and she deserves everything, all the accolades, because she's the real deal. Um, you know, everybody, well, not everybody, you know, I can Tina Turner, you may have discovered really from Phil Spector, and of course he did River Deep, Mountain High, um, maybe their most famous track, and the amazing thing about it, it was in, in America it was a failure, and Phil Spector thought it was the greatest thing he ever did, and it was such a failure in, in America that he said he was going to give up music, uh, he was so devastated. In Europe and around the world, River Deep, Mountain High is a huge classic, but in America, the, the story is that the uh, white stations wouldn't play because they said it was too black. Black stations wouldn't play because they said it was too white. Um, that's the rumor. Uh, it was really before my time. I discovered Tina Turner in this movie, Gimme Shelter, which I still think is possibly the greatest rock and roll documentary ever made. But if you ever watch Gimme Shelter, I can Tina Turner with the opening band. In fact, the deluxe edition of Get Your Eye is out. They have uh, their opening set, which is awesome. Um, but there's a scene in Gimme Shelter, and it's one of the sexiest, hottest scenes you've ever seen. It's just a close-up of Tina with this microphone, a big microphone right in front of her face. Yeah, it's kind of phallic-like. And she's singing, I've been loving you too long, really slow and really sexy. And she's right up against this mic the whole time. And the camera doesn't move, and she's touching it with her fingers and her hand and right next to her lips. Yeah, it's about as sexy as you can get, and it's an astonishingly hot performance. Rock and roll with S-E-X in it. That was Tina Turner in 1969, opening up for the Stones, I Can Tina Turner. You need to see that from this amazing movie. That was my introduction to Tina Turner. Um... You know, then uh, after Reich and Tina Turner, Tina Turner was, at least in America, really in nowhere's land, uh, not having any kind of success and released a couple of studio solo records that nobody bought and didn't get any kind of distribution. But in 1975, and I hope this doesn't fall, please don't fall. In 1975, she just she did land the part of the Acid Queen in the Who's movie Tommy. And that was pretty, pretty cool. Of course, look on the cover. She don't even get mentioned there. Ann Margaret, Oliver Reed, Roger Daltrey, Elton John. Where's Tina Turner mentioned? She's really not. She's down there. So she was not a very big star. But there she is on the back of the laser disc doing the acid queen. She only did that one song, but it was great. A highlight of the film, Tommy. Um, then... Uh, you know, she goes back with the Stones a long way. 1969, they were the opening band, but they played with the Stones even in 66, which is River Deep Mountain High time period. And she had a good friendship with Mick Jagger. And in 1981, her career again was pretty much in nowhere's land. And the Rolling Stones had a huge tour in 1981, the Tattoo You Tour, which I was lucky enough to see three times. And this is my archives that I never really show you guys. But if you go, if I go to 1981, and I am sure I would have something here. Let's see what I have in the archives. 1981, I saw the Stones three times. I saw them 
twice at Madison Square Garden and one at, at in the Meadowlands. And there's for my scrapbook. There's my ticket stuff. There's the Meadowlands show. Tickets were a whopping $15.75. That was a lot of money in 1981. But uh, and then I saw the two shows at the Garden. Now, Tina Turner was the opening act at the Brendan Byrne Arena right there. This is from my scrapbook, November 7, 1981. And that's the newspaper review from Wayne Robbins. And I have a bunch of newspaper reviews from the Garden shows. She didn't even get a mention in the review of the concert. They didn't even mention Tina Turner as the opening band. But she was like the most incredible opening act I've ever seen. And Mick invited her out uh, to do Honky Tonk Women with the Stones. And I could remember it to this day. It was absolutely amazing. And I was like, how she's not a huge star, I don't understand. That was in 1981. Well, let's move ahead three years, and with the help of other people, including a lot of producers and Mark Knopfler, she did release her big comeback album, Private Dancer, and this was a huge, huge album. Uh, it deserved all the respect and success that it got, you know, what's love got to do with it. This is a lot of day version. It's a little bit of a different uh, than the original that came out. But, you know, lots of hits. What's Love Got to Do With It still sounds great. Let's Stay Together to Cover. Better Be Good to Me. Um, just a lot of great stuff on here. It was an awesome album. This is a version with a bunch of bonus tracks and things like that. But this album brought her back huge in America and even in bigger internationally, where she became just a gigantic star. Uh, Private Dancer, the title track, was written by Mark Nafla for her. Well, actually, it was going to be a Dire Straits song. It actually sounds like a Dire Straits song. But she owns that track for, for sure. Um, and she did that album. Then she did, she became a major touring act. She released Tina Live, double live record, and an amazing live record. Love this album. Uh, guest stars on there are Clapton and Brian Adams and David Bowie. And uh, she does an amazing version, which I remember seeing when she opened for the Stones. She does an amazing version of Help, the Beatles track. I think she owns that track. When I hear Tina's version of it, no offense, I can't even listen to the Beatles version. It, it's just, it's just uh, incredible. It is a great live record if you don't know Tina Turner Live. That's a great one. Um, probably the best way to listen to Tina Turner is there's a ton of compilation albums. You know, her solo records after Private Dancer, I had some. I got rid of some. They're good. Not amazing in my opinion. But, you know, simply the best is a... A basic compilation and really this is all you kind of need you know you get like these best ofs because when you cherry pick her best songs like these albums do she's phenomenal absolutely phenomenal uh they did the soundtrack to the movie what's love got to do with it which is a really cool soundtrack with lots of different kind of tracks some deeper stuff not just the big hits um that's a really cool collection and they just never stopped releasing compilations. Here's a double CD called All the Best, which is just loaded with stuff, uh, as you can see, including remixes and stuff like that. But she's just so awesome. It's Only Love, great duet with Brian Adams. Um, and then there's a lot of compilations. Here's another one, Tina, with an exclamation. And this is uh, folds out like that. And they're all a little bit different, although similar. And this one's got some live tracks and previously unreleased stuff. There's the Acid Queen. So all of these compilations are worthwhile. You don't need all of them, but, you know, choose one. Um, another highlight I remember from 1985 when she did Live Aid. And uh, she, uh, Mick Jagger was performing, and she performed with Mick Jagger, and it was just awesome. Uh, she comes out and they do State of Shock, that duet he originally did with Michael Jackson, but it's much better with Tina Turner, and then they go into It's Only Rock and Roll, and I do remember he reaches over and he unpeels her skirt, like a black leather skirt, and she stops, you know, it's kind of like that Janet Jackson thing that happened years later with it before, she kind of stops, she looks down, she's in front of like 80,000 people on national TV, and I think she looks down to make sure nothing's showing, you know. And, uh, and then she continues on. But that's a great highlight of Live Aid. This is a cool box DVD I have of Live Aid. But that was a definitely a highlight. Mick Jagger with Tina Turner. It was just awesome. 
And then, uh, what are the highlights? You know, she, she came out at one point. Here's a laser disc of the Princess Trust All-Star Rock concert. Tina Turner with the big hair that she had in those 80s time period. And, uh, you know, what does she do on here? Better Be Good to Me is the opening track. You know, she's with, uh, she's on the same level as, you know, Eric Clapton and Mark Knopfler and Elton John and Phil Collins and Paul McCartney, Rod Stewart, you know. She's as good as anybody. There she is, performing right there with Paul McCartney. She was the real deal, man, and she was a rocker. She was everything. And, interna you know, she was big in America, but internationally, you know, when you watch those concerts, here's one, Tina Turner Live in Amsterdam, the Wildest Dreams Tour. This is a laser disc. You know, she's playing in front of crowds of like 70, 80,000 people per show. I mean, she was just massive. And what a great performer, you know. Unbelievable performer. Always had a great band. Huge stage show for these stadiums. And, you know, she just knocks it dead and really singing and really dancing. And doing the choreography, but always really singing because that was the most important part. You know, she was the real deal. So... Yeah, it's a sad day, but, you know, she was 83, so she was one of the, really one of the oldest states, and Mick Jagger's going to be turning 80, so she had three years on him, but she wasn't well for a, a number of years, so I hope uh, she didn't suffer too much at the end, but, you know, I, I'm assuming there's accolades out there, I haven't looked, but she certainly deserves them because she was unique with a capital U, I mean, she was a real artist, and what a difficult and incredibly interesting life and came back bigger than ever and uh with dignity just great so sorry uh about the bad news about tina turner but again this t for tennessee is tina turner the real deal and i hope you go listen to some of her music go pick up any of these best ofs they're really great the tina turner live stuff is great watch her videos are phenomenal a sad day for sure, but uh, a good day to appreciate her awesome talent, which she was. So thanks for watching the Alan Rosenberg Show. Um, if you're new or you're not and you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe. Check out my other videos. Uh, there are other videos I did on rock stars that have passed away. Kristen McVie I did and some other ones. Jolly Watts. Um, and they're really getting to that age where it's just going to keep happening, which is really sad. So... Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you on my next video.